continuation of the history of gear uh, sleeping bag section. Uh, just as kind of a review, uh, for about the first third of the 20th century, the generally agreed upon camping insulation was wool blankets. Uh, about 1907, Horace Kephart wrote his uh, famous book, uh, where he said he didn't even like sleeping bags, but he listed a couple of sleeping bags that he would use, you know, kind of, if he had to, we would. But the question we're asking now, and the one we're trying to answer now, is how did a culture dedicated to the use over hundreds of years of wool as its primary outdoor insulation, even to the point where the first commercial sleeping bags were essentially wool blankets, like the Kenwood bag and the Jaeger bag. Now, if you haven't watched any of the other uh, sleeping bag videos, I will put a link at the end of this video to the playlist for the uh, sleeping bag videos, okay? Uh, just in case this is the first one you've seen. And, and on that note, I'm, I'm gonna let you, you guys know that uh, you're gonna see other videos after you subscribe to this channel, which I hope you do. Uh, if you're new here and you wanna subscribe and you just wanna see the history of sleeping bags, I'm not gonna put out a video every week on sleeping bags. If you're here for the history of camping gear, I'm really not going to put out a video every week on the history of camping gear. I have two other passions. Uh, one is living history, and I am dedicated to the idea that living history is the best teaching and learning tool available to uh, laymen as opposed to professional historians. Uh, and also make your own gear, although these days all of my make your own gear videos are going to be about making gear that was in use in the 1920s and the 1930s because there was a good deal of gear made by people back then. Probably more than the commercial gear that the history of gear talks about. Okay? Uh, you don't have to watch those videos. I like it if you did, but you don't have to do that. You can wait until more History of Gear videos come out. Okay? All right. Uh, the first video in the middle third series uh, was the video I did, the, the, just the immediate previous video I did on a sleeping bag that was found in a British officer's bedroll from World War One that was the earliest use of KPOC as a sleeping bag insulation that I have found. Okay, I personally am not aware of any use, any commercial use of KPOC in a sleeping bag prior to the 1914 date that that sleeping bag uh, represents. Okay, the other insulations that came about after the First World War, as people began to buy sleeping bags, as the sleeping bag became more popular, the two insulations that were most prevalent were cotton batting and K-POC. Now, I really want to talk about K-POC in this video, and there goes my computer doing a thing. I really want to talk about K-POC in this video, but first I want to show you cotton insulation sleeping bags. Sleeping bags made with cotton insulation. Okay, let's take a look at the old man 
in the spare room, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a couple of different sleeping bags. Uh, we're going to show you uh, some early cotton filled bags. Uh, I'll get a close up of this a little later, uh, but we know that this one is filled with cotton because there's a, a little bitty mouse hole right here. And I can see the cotton on the inside. Now the thing about this bag, it's one of the earliest bags I have. Uh, it was purchased in 1917 by a brand new army officer who was commissioned in 1917 and it was bought as part of his kit. There is no manufacturer's name or label anywhere on this bag. It came associated with a, an oil cloth bedroll, uh, waterproof bedroll that was similarly not marked. Now what that tells me is that this was uh, made uh, by a local hardware store or outfitter uh, similar to the uh, sleeping bag I showed you uh, in one of the first videos uh, uh, by the uh, uh, department store. I'll, I'll link to that video at the end of this video. Uh, the salient feature of this bag is that it opens up from top, from the top, exposing the entire uh, side. In other words, it's not a side opening bag, and it doesn't open down the center like a Kenwood bag. Uh, and there is no way to close it. There's no buttons, no snaps, no zipper. But and again, we'll get, we'll get close-ups of this construction. Uh, this is a bag that we're going to try to replicate when we get the uh, What Price Glory uh, uh, CCC comforter. Okay? But this is typical of early bags in that it has, it, it requires some overhead cover and a waterproof ground sheet because this will not protect you from the dew and the bird poop falling out of the trees. Uh, what happened next in the evolution of sleeping bags is this one over here. We'll unroll that and we'll show that to you. Okay, so this bag was made by the Sun Tent Lubert Company. Uh, it was a very popular company uh, in the 1930s and the 1940s on into uh, the 1950s and 60s. This is a cotton batting bag as well. Uh, there is places here where I can see the cotton batting, and we'll get a little close-up of that. Uh, it answers the question, what do you do to make your sleeping bag lighter, to make your, 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 your camp outfit lighter? What they've done is they put a waterproof canvas cover on it. It still has the same kind of cotton batting, a uh, quilted cotton batting, but it has uh, a uh, canvas cover and it has a hood on it. It doubles as a uh, cover for the sleeping bag when it's rolled up, but it can also be deployed as a, as a little tent, much in the same way as the Kenwood bag could. Okay. So this is an attempt to tell people, well, uh, an attempt uh, to tell people, well, you don't need to bring your tent, and you don't need to bring a ground cover. It's already here. The sleeping bag is a self-contained sleeping system, kind of like a baby bag. Okay, what those two bags represent? The reason why I'm showing them the way I'm showing them is the difference between the way sleeping bags were made and the market for sleeping bags for about the first 20 years of the 20th century as opposed to from 1920 to about 19, for the next 50 years to, to about 1970. Uh, the first thing is you notice about that 1917 bag, it, it's uh, you probably have never seen a sleeping bag, I know I haven't, a sleeping bag that opens completely up at the top. 
rather than a side opening bag. That's interesting and different. I don't think it works because uh, it's going to be easy to throw that off. With a side opening bag you can kind of snuggle up in the corner and uh, your, your shoulders won't get cold. But the reason why it's here is because sleeping bags for about the first 20 years there wasn't a big manufacturing base for sleeping bags. You had Kenwood and, and Jaeger and in about the early 20s Jaeger stopped making sleeping bags in favor of fashion. So there weren't a lot of places you could go to buy a sleeping bag even if you wanted one. Okay, Most of the camping gear that can be found for about oh the first third, maybe first half of the century, was found in hardware stores and Army-Navy stores, which are different from Army surplus stores. Army-Navy store is either a store all by itself or a department in a department store, like the famous uh, department store sleeping bag I showed you at the very beginning of this series. Uh, these hardware stores had either had their own manufacturing facilities, their own sewing facilities, like, like famous hardware, famous department stores did, or they contracted out locally to have things made. Uh, this is why you see uh, kind of generic designs being sold in the early 20th century, baker tents and A-frames and wall tents, something anybody could make. Okay, uh, I've got another video coming up of a very specialized tent that will surprise you about its weight, but that's going to be in a little while. So that's what that first bag represents, okay, is how sleeping bags were made and the fact that they were new, they were feeling their way as to how things were going to be set up. The Kenwood bag opened up down in the center. Uh, the Jaeger bag opened up on the side. This bag, the whole top opens up. Okay? Now what that second bag does, that sun tent bag, that shows the final form. Okay, the final form that sleeping bags took, the design that pretty much everybody agreed on. Okay? And this happened somewhere in the middle 20s, maybe the late 20s. Not, I'm not entirely sure of the date, but the final form was a rectangular bag that opened along the side, okay? And it had a canvas cover and an insulation in it, usually cotton. And most of them fastened on the side with snaps like we're showing you here. Zippers didn't come into uh, uh, vogue for consumer level sleeping bags until the late 1930s. Okay, you find most uh, most of the early sleeping bags from the 1930s designs that you find are actually found in World War II officers bedrolls like that one I showed you. Okay, and most of them have the snaps along the side. A few have a zipper. Okay, most of the sleeping bag manufacturers, Hirschweiss, Sun Tent, uh, Seattle Quilt, and the American Pad and Textile Company, Tapatco, we'll show you a bag uh, in the next video, a Tapatco bag. But most of them offered zippers as, a, as an option, a more expensive option late in the late 30s. So you do see some of those in the World War II bags. But one thing that we should mention here right now, that sun tent bag weighs six pounds. Now the question becomes, why would somebody carry a six pound cotton sleeping bag when they could carry a five pound wool blanket which insulates better. What's the answer to that? Well I gave you a clue when I said this. 
But this is typical of early bags in that it has, it, it requires some overhead cover and a waterproof ground sheet because this will not protect you from the dew and the bird poop falling out of the trees. So that's why thousands of Americans finally started ignoring Horace Kephart's advice about sleeping bags. And the sleeping bags grew up. They came of age. If we can compare uh, the development of sleeping bags to the uh, life of a human, the early bags, the early wool blankets, that's infancy. But that's, that's the baby. Okay? When we started to get into folding pairs of blankets and making bags out of wool, uh, making them modular like with the, uh, the Jaeger bag, we're starting to be toddlers. Okay? When we get to the form of that British bag and that American World War I bag, well now we're adolescents. But here, when we finally take and make the sleeping bag a complete sleep system, one where you don't have to carry your tent and you don't have to carry a ground cover. Now a six pound sleeping bag built like that becomes a much lighter weight, lower bulk sleep system for moderate temperatures that weighs less than a five pound blanket and a five pound tent and a five pound uh, ground cover. And now you can carry two quarts of water. Okay? Alright, so what we've got now is the final form of the sleeping bag for uh, the rest of the 20th century until the 1970s. Uh, with some stops along the way, we're gonna, we're gonna, when we get past World War II, we've got some things to tell you. Uh, the next sleeping bag video is going to be on a K-pop bags. Uh, because K-POC is a better insulation and it represents a big development in sleeping bags. We'll get into that more when we get to that sleeping bag. Uh, I've got a couple of videos I've got to do probably in between and around. Uh, I've got to go camping with my Make Your Own Gear camping system. i got one video to do on that. That's the next video that will come out so that I can go camping. It's getting hot here in Texas. Uh, in, uh, in about eight or ten weeks, it's going to be too hot to go camping. That's the unfortunate thing about living down here in God's country. You know, I, I, it's really uncomfortable to camp between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Doesn't mean I don't do it. It's just uncomfortable. Okay? So, uh, stick around. If you found this, uh, this video helpful, entertaining, uh, if you got anything out of it, please like the video, please subscribe, and please share the video in your social media uh, uh, hangouts so that other people who you know are, who are interested in the same things that you and I are can find this and we can kind of spread the word, make the community a bit larger. In the meantime, we'll see you down the trail. Thank you.